here's a segment from a recent Gun Talk radio episode. You can listen to all the Gun Talk radio podcasts however you tune in, or check out guntalk.com for more. Let me bring in right now Lee Newton from Classic Sporting Arms. He's also kind of the guru of Ruger number ones and Ruger collecting and hunting. And, and Lee, I was just looking at the story on your website of that massive whitetail deer you got. Man, that is something else. Well, that was a hunt, for sure. I, <laughs> and you shot him with your number one, of course. Shot him with a number one. One shot. One shot. So let me ask you this. Uh, you're kind of the guru, and I don't know if you're the president of the Ruger Collectors, or but you're the go-to guy on number ones for sure. What is it about the Ruger number one single-shot rifle that is so intriguing? Well, to me, it's the one class rifle that's been made in the last 50 years, introduced in the last 50 years. You know, you collect the Winchester Model 70, and it had its place for all those years. And if you look at the last 50 or 55 now, it's just a classic rifle, a single shot with classic lines, usually with nice wood, and they usually shoot well. Okay, talk about that, because we were, we were both at the uh... – Jack O'Connor Center in Lewiston, Idaho, last weekend, and we were talking about that. And the idea, people still say, well, you know, the, new, the number ones really look good and they're classic looking, but they really don't shoot that well. And you're saying, yeah, well, that hasn't been true for several decades. Talk about the, the accuracy and kind of what happened and how they got better. Well, I don't know that I'm an expert on, on that, but in the, in the beginning, in the 67 to early 70 time frame, uh, the number ones used Douglas barrels. And then they were going to ramp up the production such that Douglas couldn't supply them. So they went out and, you know, bought contract barrels from whoever could supply them. So that's some of the barrels in the time frame that people say, well, they won't shoot. I've only ever had one number one that we couldn't get to shoot. It was a 25 out 6 made in about 1973 or 4. Other hmm. than that, all of my I've had have shot plenty well for, for the hunting that I do. Uh, but the the main point I like to tell people is that in 1992 or three is when Ruger installed their own hammer forge barrel making equipment. Mm-hmm. The Ruger barrels of today are as good as any factory made barrels out there. In fact, they're the most probably. Well, and I have. Yeah, you know, these two eighty Ackleys have really shot well. I haven't had anybody yet tell me they wouldn't shoot. Well, yeah, you know, and we ought to talk about that for a second because you know I. I was able to grab one of those from you because I think was the, the run on those was 125. Well, it turned out to be 155 because we had 30 okay. extras made there at the end. And by the way, they're all gone. There's not any of them left. These were the oh boy, the rifles this to was... honor you know my number one mentor Joe Clayton, and we had them serial numbered with a JDC prefix, and they were numbered from one to 155. And these were chambered for the 280 Ackley improved with a, a special Ackley 20. Improved. 25-inch long barrel, special run. I've got one of them. Barrel, huh? And I will tell you, mine is probably a three-quarter to one-inch gun, and I am perfectly happy with that in a hunting rifle. And the recoil is not that bad on them. And, you know, I'm so old, I don't like to get kicked anymore, and I'd give up on a 7-millimeter rim mag years ago. And right. when I started shooting this thing, I couldn't believe the, the, less, the difference in recoil. For a hunter, there's something else that a lot of people don't understand until they actually look at them or think about it. The Ruger number one has no repeating action, and so the they are I would call them somewhere in the order of four to five inches shorter because you don't have that repeating action. So you can have a 25 or 26 inch barrel on a number one, and it is no longer overall length than a 22 inch barrel on a bolt action. That's true. You know, there's about four and a half inches difference being shorter than, you know, most standard bolt actions, which is real handy, you know, carrying around, just handling it. They just handle better than me. Well, I use my little uh, 22-inch barrel uh, 257 Roberts, number one I've had for many, many years, on my mule deer hunt last year, and it is just a dream to walk around with. It's just short. I was going to say light. They're not really light actions because there is a lot of metal in them, but they're not overly heavy at the same time. No, they're not. And that that one A two fifty seven Roberts yours probably only weighs about seven or seven and a quarter pounds without a scope. And you know, with a scope, you're up to just about eight or right at eight. Mm-hmm. No, Which it's, is it's great. Light, even for old, old guys. <laughs> 
And so are there, are they making them now? What's the status of the number one? Well, it seems like with COVID, everything's on a hiatus, and it doesn't appear that any number ones have been made in about the last year and a half or something like that. They, we visited with the Ruger people at NRA, and they mm-hmm. say, yep, we're going to make some next year. So <laughs> that's what I'm looking forward to. And, you know, and that's been true. You know, we had the combination of COVID and the run on guns where a company like Ruger saying, you know, look, just make the stuff that people really want to buy. Make the pistols, make the 9 millimeters, right. make the 5.56s, five, get them out the door. And, you know, later on when things slow down, then we'll get back to making, you know, maybe some 77s, maybe some number ones. I think things are slowing down a little bit now. I'm seeing more guns available in gun stores, and certainly I'm seeing more ammo available these days. Yes, I am, too. So if you had to just pick one up and go hunting with it, which one are you going to grab? It's always the 280 Ackley. (laughs) That's my gun. And I've been rather (laughs) fickle over the last... 10 or 15 years, you know, I, I got one of the 65 284s that came out in about 2013, and that was going to be my hunting rifle. Right. And then the 275 Rigby came out, the one I was the 24 inch barrel, so that was my hunting rifle. And then the 257 Weatherby with that 28 inch barrel, I actually got one of those and scoped it up and, you know, shot shot one, one buck with it. But uh, when that 280 came out and I started handling it and shoot it, that's what I shot the last three or four deer with, and that's what I plan on using this year for the several deer hunts that I've got in the calendar. You know, I first learned about the 280 Ackley probably 30 years ago when Kenny Jarrett made one from Dad uh, way back, and then he was saying, look, you get a 7 mag performance with less recoil in a better cartridge, better cartridge design, and he was just well ahead of the popularity. In fact, I think that was probably even before it became a uh, factory ground. Oh, yeah, it was, because I think it was 2007 that Nosler, uh, you know, did the Sammy Specs on it. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even know that, because Joe had a custom one made up, and Joe Clayton, that is. And mm-hmm. he was telling me about how great it was, and that we need we need to get Ruger to make us a number one like that. And at the time, I thought it was still a wildcat. No, I just had not kept up with that, and... I guess I saw somewhere that Savage had their 110 chambered for it. I said, well, my Lord, if Savage is chambering it, then it's got to be a Sammy Speck round. And so I did look it up and saw that it was and said, well, we got a chance, Joe, to get Ruger to make this. And <laughs> and after a few months of talking to some of my friends at Ruger, <laughs> it happened. But it's just a, it's a fantastic round. And it's interesting in that the, the 280 Remington, as good a round as it was, it was never – factory loaded its potential because if you remember and you're you're old enough to remember that the 740 auto loader and the 760 right. Remington pump were the first two yeah they kept the pressures down and so the 280 never performed as well as it could have yeah. and as well as it does with uh factory i mean with uh hand loads and then but the uh, the 280 actually they increase the pressure on that for the factory load, and it is a humdinger. It's it's a great cartridge. Yes, it is. Well, it sounds like it's I caught you in the middle of doing something. Are you outside by any chance? I'm outside because it's the only place that I get a signal <laughs> good enough <laughs> to not drop out. <laughs> That's what happens when you live out in the wilds of Texas, man. <laughs> it is. When I'm in the house, my signal is just no good. So, all right, so you've got uh, your website, ClassicSportingArms.com, and you've got information about collecting number ones, but you also have some for sale. Do you, do you have any rifles in stock these days? Well, the the website for sale page has never been up to date, but uh, I do have a lot of Ruger number ones that are available. Uh, I don't know how many, but you know, I kind of tell people I've got more than anybody in the world. <laughs> so, Wouldn't be surprised, sir. So, so, so if they're not on the yeah. website, what do people need to do? They just need to contact you and say, what do you got, or tell you what they're looking they for? They just need to call me or email me from the numbers that's on the website. All right, you go I to really ClassicSportingArms.com. I'm sorry? Yeah. I really intended that website to be more, you know, there's stories and articles about uh, Ruger number ones and different hunting stories, and there's a few of those on there. i still got a couple to get on there. I shot a pretty good non-typical buck in Texas last your season before last now that I don't even have that story on there yet. <laughs> well, you, you get busy, man. What else are you doing these days? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
just uh, I'm retired and getting old. That's what I do. Yeah, I hear you, but it's, it's all fun. Well, I, I just want people ought to go take a look at it. ClassicSportingArms.com. Lee Newton, thank you so much for for being on here, and it's really good to spend some time with you last week up in right. Lewiston. Good, good to see you these last at, at NRA and at the Jack O'Connor Center. That's right. All right, you take care, my friend. All right, thank you. Good stuff. Good rifles, good people. Uh, if you ever ha- had a hankering for one, maybe you have been a caliber that you think's not available these days, just check with Lee. Chances are he's got one. 